Hey guys, this is Mr. Kennedy back with a short video on evolution and we can't talk about evolution without talking about this gentleman here, Charles Darwin. Now, when we talk about evolution, it was made famous by Darwin's publication in 1859 of The Origin of Species. And basically evolution says that it's a change over time, gradually, uh, to a population and not to an individual. And one of the key components of evolution is natural selection, which basically says that nature selects which traits are passed on from generation to generation, and that these adaptations are going to make those animals that live more favorable in some way. Now, when we look throughout geologic time, there have been a lot of successions and extinctions of animals taking the place of other animals as being the supreme beings, etc. Believe it or not, there's been five great big mass extinctions. You know, the most famous one's the last one that we had, which is the extinction of the dinosaurs. But there was actually been four other ones before that of big extinctions. And these extinctions and these natural successions have lim lent themselves to um, evolution. You know, I mean, how organisms take the place of other organisms. Now, when we talk about evolution, we have to look at this little um, chart here of the different people who are famous in evolution. Carlos Linnaeus is the first one, and Carlos Linnaeus invented the first taxonomic scheme. He's the one that did um, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. You know, kings play chess on flat green stools. And he classified everything by a scientific name, uh, by its genus and its species. Uh, then you had a man named Hutton, which believed uh, in gradualism, or he, he coined gradualism. Gradualism says that organisms gradually change or inherit traits over time. You had Lamarck, who um, had the evolutionary theory of acquired traits being passed on. Um, Lamarck's not really creditable in, in, in evolutionist uh, views because, you know, he was saying if, if I acquired a certain trait... Um, during my lifetime, I would pass that on, and, and he, he's bas basically saying the individuals are going to cause evolution to occur, which we know that's not true. Uh, Malthus um, did a famous study on population growth. He actually did his, his studies saying that if populations weren't controlled, that eventually they would grow out of control, and they would be more people than there were food, and that would cause our own demise. Um, but his studies of populations have felt, have fallen into our study of evolutionary biology today. Uh, Colbert was a paleontologist. He believed in punctuated equilibrium, and he did this based on studying fossil records or paleontology. And he said he didn't believe necessarily that organisms gradually changed. He thought it happened in short, quick bursts over long over over periods of time. You know, like. Nothing would happen, and boom, things would change, and boom, things would change again. Lyell is the next one, and he believed in uniformitarianism, which basically said that the life, that the processes of the earth are what's continuously shaping the population. Now, Darwin based a lot of his theory on, on uniformitarianism. Now, Darwin believed in natural selection and evolution. He's the one that was famous and you know, who we contribute a lot of evolutionary thoughts to. Uh, Mendel was Gregor Mendel, and he did inheritance and how inheritance of pea plant, I mean, pea plants, right, and how traits are passed from generation to generation and how you get favorable traits, etc. And then Wallace, you might have never heard of Wallace. Wallace believed in evolution, and him and Wallace actually published a paper together on evolution. They had very similar views, believed that uh, nature is what selected it. Now, there is a slight difference. Darwin believed that species competed with other species or with other individuals within the population and the stronger ones survived and passed on its traits. Wallace believed that um, organisms were, would change based on environmental pressures, not necessarily individual species, but they still had similar ideas that the strongest ones going to survive and pass on their traits to the next generation. Uh, now, Charles Darwin, you know, was a bio was a Brit British naturalist. He, he traveled on the HMS Beagle, and he basically, you know, that's where he figured out the idea of natural selection or evolution. Now, on his travels, you know, he traveled for about five years. 
uh, around the world, and you see his uh, path down here at the bottom of the page. His major discoveries were at the Galapagos Islands, which are just about 500 miles off the coast of South America. And the Galapagos Islands, that the, the, the thing that amazed Darwin were all the birds that he found. You know, he found birds, and he thought that some of them were finches. He thought some of them were sparrows. Some of them were woodpeckers. Some of them were wobblers, you know. But when Darwin saw, looked at, really looked closely at the 14 species of birds, uh, excuse me, the 14 birds that he found that he thought were different species, he actually found that they were all finches. What he thought was a finch was a large ground finch. What he thought was a sparrow was a small ground finch. What he thought was a woodpecker was a wobbler finch. And what he thought was a wobbler was a, a, a veggie, to, veggie tree finch. Um, vegetative tree finch. Um, you know, there was only one species of finch on the entire Galapagos Islands. And he, he, he thought that, you know, that there are all these different birds. That really got Darwin to thinking, you know. How did one species of finch become so many different finches? And he figured out that it all had to do with the different foods that were on the different islands that they were. And depending on the shape of the beak, they were better able to eat the food on that island. And the ones that were more successful at eating food on the island were the ones that reproduced and, and passed on those traits. And they tended to start to look more and more like them. Um, you know, he basically concluded that Small populations of finches landed on the islands, you know, from South America, and the variation in beaks were because of the food sources. And over many generations, the population of finches changed both anatomically and behaviorally. Where they where, where they lived at in in a tree, you know, were they on the ground, were they in the air, etc. And advantageous traits were accumulated in the population, and that created that gene pool, and that created a new species. Now. When we look at Darwin's finches, I mean, that they are the basis for the evolutionary theory. We've got to look at, I mean, don't forget their beaks, you know. If you had a different beak, you were able to successfully compete, you were successfully feed, and successfully reproduce. I mean, that's basically the premise of evolution. If you can compete or outcompete someone else for food and get thereby get the ability to reproduce, you're going to pass your traits on to your offspring. Now, it wasn't the only things that he saw. I mean, there was actually turtles on the islands that that people could actually identify what island you were on just by looking at the turtle. Uh, the pendant island turtle up here at the top, you know, I'm sorry, the hood-eyed turtle down here at the bottom, the saddleback island, he's got a long neck and his shell's actually made where he can stand up and get vegetation. There's not a lot of vegetation on the ground. Um, the, the Isabel Island turtle down here in the bottom left-hand corner, the dome shape, it, it's much lower to the ground because it's, it's on an island that has a lot more vegetation. And then the pendant island turtle, which one I mentioned a little bit in the, uh, earlier, it's actually an intermediate between the two, so he could actually saw different variations in other animals too, depending on what the island vegetation looked like. Now, basically, the, the essence of Darwin's ideas is natural selection is variation exists in all populations. Over, overproduction of the offspring will mean that these offspring had to compete and the strongest will survive. Um, differential survival, so successful traits are going to mean that they're going to have adaptations to be created. And you're going to have differential reproduction, which means that the ones with the, advantage, uh, the adaptions are going to become more able to reproduce and are going to become more common in the population. So, you know, Darwin had his eyes shaped by this travels with the U.S., um, the HMS Beagle. Now, I hope this gives you a brief overview of um, Darwinian evolution, and I will talk to you soon.